The assembly is now in session. Assembly member Mays notices the absence of a quorum. Sergeants at arms will prepare the chamber and bring in the absent members. The clerk will call the roll. Ashajian, Alejo, Allen, Arambula, Atkins, Baker, Bigelow, Bloom, Bonilla, Bonta, Bro, Brown, Burke, Calderon, Campos, Chang, Chow, Chavez, David Chu, Canton Chu, Cooley, Cooper, Dababne, Daly, Daly, Dodd, Eggman, Frazier, Gaines, Gallagher, Christina Garcia, Eduardo Garcia, Gatto, Gibson, Gomez, Gonzalez, Gordon, Gray, Grove, Hadley, Harper, Hernandez, Holden, Irwin, Jones, Joan Sawyer, Kim, Lackey, Levine, Linder, Lopez, Lowe, Mainshine, Mathis, Mays, McCarty, Medina, Melendez, Mullen, Nazarian, Obernolte, O'Donnell, Olson, Patterson, Quirk, Billy Thomas, Barrigas, Salas, Santiago, Steinorth, Stone, Thurman, Ting, Wagner, Waldron, Weber, Wilk, Williams, Wood, Mr. Speaker.
Members, a quorum is present. A quorum is present in the Assembly. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chamber and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. The day's prayer will be offered by our guest chaplain, Assembly Member Rich Gordon. Mr. Gordon. Lord, last week, the Dalai Lama reminded us that we will always find differences, and he encouraged us to use dialogue to seek common ground. He also said that the way to resolve differences is not through force. Yesterday, outside this great Capitol building, and two weeks ago in Orlando, force and violence were utilized in response to difference. We pray that love will conquer hate, and we vow that we will not be defined by hate, hateful speech, or hateful actions. We will be defined by love. Help us to find the key that will unlock our heart so that we can respect each other and help us as leaders of this great state to model behavior that demonstrates acceptance, tolerance, and love. This is our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the flag salute. Please join Ms. Gaines as she leads us in the pledge. Ms. Gaines. Members, please join me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber, Sacramento, Thursday, June 16, 2016. The assembly met at 9 a.m. Honorable Kevin Mullen, Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly Presiding. Chief Clerk E. Dotson Wilson at the desk. Reading Clerk Kathleen M. Lewis reading. The roll was called. Assembly Mr. Member Calderon moves at Ms. Waldron seconds. That the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions, the absences for the day for personal business, Speaker Rendon. Speaker Emeritus Atkins, Assembly Members Medina and Thurmond. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized for your procedural motion, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 118 and allow Assembly Member Campos, Kansan Chu, Dababne, and Gatto to have guests and photographers on the floor today. With that objection, the request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pursuant to Assembly Rule 96, I request unanimous consent to re-refer the following bills to committee. SB 45 Mendoza from the Labor and Employment Committee to the Rules Committee. SB 522 Mendoza from the Government Organization Committee to the Rules Committee. And SB 1250 McGuire from the Utilities and Commerce Committee to the Rules Committee. With that objection, that request is granted. 
Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to suspend Joint Rule 62A, the file notice requirements, to allow the Water Parks and Wildlife Committee to notice and to hear SB 564 Canella on Tuesday, June 28, 2016, at 9 a.m. With that objection, that request also granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Joint Rule 62A, the file notice requirements, to and Assembly Rule 56 to allow the Local Government Committee to notice and to hear SB 564 Canella on Wednesday, June 29, 2016, at 1.30 uh, p.m., pending re-referral from the Water Parks and Wildlife Committee. With that objection, that request also granted. I request unanimous consent to suspend Joint Rule 62A, the file notice requirements, and Assembly Rule 56 to allow the Natural Resources Committee to notice and to hear SB 1207, Hueso, on Thursday, June 30, 2016, at 8.30 a.m., pending re-referral from the Utilities and Commerce Committee. With that objection, the request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Joint Rule 62A, the file notice requirements, and allow the Natural Resources Committee to notice and to hear SB 20 Pavley on Thursday, June 30, 2016, at 8.30 a.m. With that objection, that request also granted. Members, if I could have your attention. I'm sorry, Mr. Calderon, for what yeah. purpose? Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to allow Assemblymember Brown to have a guest on the floor. With that objection, that request is granted. Members, if I could have your attention. On behalf of Speaker Rendon, in the gallery today is a delegation of members from Parliament from the Republic of India. They are traveling throughout the U.S. as part of the U.S. State Department's International Visitor Leadership Program. While here, they will learn about the role of state government in trade promotion and foreign investment activities, as well as California's role in stimulating the economy, international trade, and global cooperation. Please welcome them to the Assembly today.
Business on the Daily File, second reading. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2863 with amendments, Senate Bill 1304, 1132, 873 with amendments, 898 with amendments, 909 with amendments, 1343, 1413, 693 with amendments, 702 with amendments, 1229 with amendments, 266 with amendments, 448 with amendments, 6 with amendments, 823 with amendments, 1054 with amendments, and 1295 with amendments. All bills will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Members moving to the file on concurrence file items 18 through 21, pass and retain. That brings us to file item number 22. That's AB 1568 by Mr. Bonta. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1568 by Assemblymember Bonta and others, and actually in a Medi-Cal making appropriation therefore, declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Mr. Bonta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. AB 1568 is back from the Senate for concurrence. Amendments taken in the Senate split the four key components of the waiver between this bill and SB 815. AB 1568 currently contains the provisions enacting the whole person care program, the dental transformation initiative, and the evaluations and reports required under the waiver. This will help enact the Medi-Cal 2020 waiver that provides California the opportunity to leverage federal funds to advance key initiatives supporting our most vulnerable populations. Colleagues, I respectfully ask for your I vote on this concurrence matter. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote, I 65, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. On reconsideration, file items 24 through 29 shall be continued. That brings us to assembly third reading, file item 30, pass and retain. File item number 31. That's ACR 186 by Mr. Bigelow. Clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 186 by Assemblymember Bigelow relative to California Fairground Appreciation Month. Mr. Bigelow, you may open. Mr. Speaker and members, I rise today to present ACR 186, which designates the month of June as California Fairground Appreciation Month. I don't know about you, but I am excited that fair season is right around the corner. Most of the time when we think about fairs, we think about the rides, the games, horse racing, and the delicious fried foods. How, hot dogs, corn dogs, beer rocks, you name the list around here. However, our seven-day fairs mean much more to our communities than fried Twinkies and Ferris wheels. Fairgrounds provide crucial open space for emergency response situations. They are a vital staging area for firefighters and emergency responders during our wildfire season, which is here, folks, and it's a real tough season we're facing. They are also utilized as a safe haven during catastrophic disasters, such as those wildfires, which we saw last year and we'll see probably again this year, as well as potential earthquakes, which we've heard rumblings about. These facilities are where we show off the best of what our regions have to offer. Our wines, our technology, our livestock, our natural resources. The opportunities fairgrounds provide to display agricultural products and livestock bring to the forefront the importance and reality of farming and ranching for all Californians. Our local fairs are where our youth prepare to become the next generation of farmers, ranchers. They also present a place for the folks in arts, in welding, technology, by showcasing and presenting along with competing and displaying their projects. Outside of our summer fairs, these fairgrounds host charity events, concerts, competitive exhibits, and cultural events. According to the most recent figures, state fairgrounds generated $856 million to California's economy and employed over 25,000 full-time employees. As for the California State Fair last year, more than 780,000 people attended, more than 16,280 wine slushies were served, and 13 animals were born in the baby barn. Our fairgrounds benefit the local economies and create a ripple effect of economic activity and tourism dollars for the state. 
I urge all of my colleagues to attend their local fairs this season and enjoy all that their fairgrounds have to offer. I would like, Mr. Chairman, if I could, ask that the first roll be open for co-authors. Thank you, Mr. Bigelow. Seeing no additional... Yes, Mr. Bigelow. Okay. Seeing no, <laughs> seeing no additional discussion or debate on the item, Mr. Bigelow is asking the first roll be open for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors on the resolution. This is for co-authors. This is co-authors members. This is for co-authors. Clerk will close the roll. There are 71 co-authors added on the resolution. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Bigelow, back to you for your guest introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, I'd like to invite members to come and enjoy the fair food with fair board members from around the state as it's hosted by the Western Ferrets Association and the California State Fair upon adjournment of the assembly floor session in the Willie Brown Conference Room just outside our back door. Up in the gallery uh, today, I have the Western Ferrets Association President, Troy Bowers, from the, and uh, from the Amador County Fair, Cliff Munson, CEO. From Siskiyou uh, Golden Fair, Jody Gray, CEO, El, uh, El Dorado County Fair, TJ Plew, and C from the CEO of the Salinas Valley Fair, and Tom Mitchell, CEO, Madeira District Fair, and Rick Pickering, CEO from the California State Fair to help me recognize our great fairgrounds. They're right above us here, folks. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized for your procedural motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request the unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 96 and Assembly Rule 63 to withdraw SB 842, Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review, from the Budget Committee and allow Assembly Member Ting to take it up without reference to file for the purpose of third reading. Ms. Waldron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We object and ask for roll call. Ms. Waldron is withholding unanimous consent. Mr. Calderon moves. Mr. Gibson seconds that the rules be suspended. Members, this is a procedural vote. Clerk will open the roll. Mr. Calderon is asking for an aye vote. Ms. Waldron is asking for a no vote. Mr. Calderon is asking for an aye vote. Ms. Waldron is asking for a no vote. Takes 41 to suspend the rules. Clerk will... Close the roll. Eyes 43, nose 27. The rules are suspended. Members back on the file. File item number 32. That's ACR 189. Clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 189 by Assembly Member Patterson relative to Robotics Technology Day. Mr. Patterson, you may open on the resolution. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker and members, ACR 189 proclaims today, June 27, 2016, as Robotics Technology Day. Robotics is a rapidly growing field, advancing the abilities of the 21st century market in many sectors, ranging from manufacturing, agriculture, to scientific exploration, healthcare delivery, etc. This field is expected to become a $27 billion worldwide industry, and California is well positioned to be a leader in this expanding and exciting field. California businesses and engineers are on the cutting edge of technological advances in things like drones, self-driving cars, 3D printers, life-saving surgical equipment. And ACR 189 recognizes the importance of robotic technologies and investing in educating our students in the STEM fields. Please join me in celebrating revolutionary robotics technologies and the tremendous potential to improve and modernize our way of life. Mr. Speaker, members, I would like for the first roll to be open for co-authors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. See no discussion or debate on the resolution. Mr. Patterson is asking that the first roll be open for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. 
Members, this is for co-authors, adding on ACR 189. This is for co-authors, co-authors on ACR 189. The clerk will close the roll. There are 68 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Patterson, back to you on the floor for your guest introduction. Yes, th thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Please join me in welcoming the robotics team from Clovis North High School. Every year they attend robotics competitions with other high school students who build and program industrial sized robots that can complete specific tasks. These students and their robots will be in room 125 immediately following session. Members and staff, you are welcome to come and check out the robots and take one for a test drive if you like. Please join me in welcoming the robotics team from Clovis North High School in Fresno. Members, we are going to take up the budget item without reference to file. SB 842. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 842 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review and actually in recycling, making an appropriation therefore to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Mr. Ting, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. SB 842 is a item which was brought through Budget Sub-3, our Natural Resources Budget Subcommittee, as well as in Budget Conference. For all of you know, we've had a challenging issue dealing with recycling centers and how best to continue to pay for the complex recycling infrastructure that we have here in the state of California. We have a program that's really the envy of every single state in the union, but at the same time, we're having trouble paying for it long term. What's happening is we have an infrastructure which was built in the 70s prior to curbside recycling. We have an infrastructure which is primarily impacting rural counties that don't have curbside recycling. And we have grocery stores that are supposed to be taking back these bottles and these cans and all our recycling and really don't have the ability to do that any longer. What we have been doing is working for a number of years. My colleague from Menlo Park has been doing that for a number of years, trying to find a compromise. Unfortunately, we haven't reached one yet. So what we put together in this bill is a short-term fix to bridge us through discussions and dialogues with an end date of April 1, 2017, in hopes that we can reach agreement by then. So what happens April 1, 2017? Well, every single subsidy program tied to recycling will cease so that every group that has an interest in the recycling program, whether you're the manufacturers, whether you're the beverage companies, whether you're the grocery stores, whether you're the recycling centers, everybody has equal amount of skin in the game. And we hope that by doing that, we can really bring everyone to the table to have negotiations in hopes that we could have a deal by April 1, 2017. With that, I respectfully ask for I vote. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Mr. Bloom, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, members, uh, I don't think that there's anyone who would argue that this program is a perfect solution. Uh, but absent a temporary fix, as is being proposed here this afternoon, the bottle bill program, as we know it in California, will cease to exist, and hundreds of small businesses and thousands of their employees will be out of work. Due to conditions in the commodities market over the last few years, our recyclers who are already on the thinnest of margin are, are really reaching their breaking point. And we have evidence of this. Since 2015, more than 600 convenience, store, uh, convenience zone recyclers, and that's about a third of them, have closed. And I should point out that most of those are in rural communities. So the bill in front of you today is not just about getting all of the many stakeholders to the table, but it in fact does that. Today's bill is about upholding the integrity and spirit of the program that is supported by the fee that consumers pay with the expectation that they can then reclaim their money and uh, 
It's about the small mom and pop businesses who make up the bulk of the infrastructure of the program that has allowed California to be the nation's re recycling leader. And of course, it's about the environment. It's about keeping recyclables out of landfills. And I'd like to point out that this bill before you was the creation of my friends from San Francisco and Menlo Park and myself, but I want to call out specifically their staffs, our budget staff, and speaker staff. I think it's important also to point out that for years we've waited proposal for proposals from the administration and various stakeholders, but none of these proposals got any traction. I want to thank them for their tireless work and commitment to continuing this work through the fall and next spring as we develop a true long-term solution for our beverage recycling program, and I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Mr. Obernolte, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in support of SB 842. This short-term fix to the beverage recycling program is necessary to ensure that California fulfills its promise that we make to our consumers that when they give us their deposit on a beverage container, that that deposit is fully redeemable when they recycle that container. I'm very hopeful that we can quickly become, begin discussions on a longer-term bipartisan fix for this program, but in the meantime, I urge an I vote on this short-term fix. Thank you, Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Daly, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I, too, uh, stand in support of uh, SB 842. Everything that I was going to say has already been said. Uh, I appreciate working with my friend from Menlo Park, and uh, I do represent those rural counties that uh, only have maybe one place to recycle, uh, where we don't have curbside uh, recycling available. So this bill will uh, stand in the gap until we can come along with the long-term fix. I urge an I vote. All debate having ceased on the item. Mr. Gordon, you may close on the item. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, the bill that is before us has been described as a bridge. Let me be very clear. Our recycling program isn't working for most of our consumers. It isn't working for our retailers. It isn't working for our recyclers. And it is time, finally time, for us to fix this program. I've spent most of my career here in the legislature working on this recycling program. And, and we've only been able periodically to make an incremental adjustment. By creating the bill in a way that, that provides for this cliff on April 1st, we guarantee that everyone will need to come to the table. And I plan to work with those stakeholders and all of you to achieve a revision of this program that makes it work for all of California so that we can achieve our recycling goals here in this state. This is a good bridge. We, let's walk across it together. I ask for an I vote on SB 842. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Desire to vote? All members vote. We desire to vote. All members vote. We desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. I 68, no zero. Measure passes. Members, back on the file, we are at file item number 33. HAR. 37 by Mr. Bonta. Clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 37 by Assemblymember Bonta relative to Filipino veterans. Mr. Bonta, you may open. 